Um, all right, awesome. Oh, sound. I need to plug in sound. Yeah, okay, yes. All right. Um, so it's so awesome to see such a packed house. I love it. I love it. Um, at Google, I've actually been there for about a year and a half, and I have the pleasure and pr a privilege, actually, of sitting side by side with strategic planners and creative directors at agencies. In fact, one of my clients is in the back of the room over there. He's going to be speaking later from Wyden and Kennedy. Um, and so what I get to do with these folks is help them build out their ideas, their creative ideas, in the digital space. And so part of my job includes coming to the table with insights, insights on how we engage with the digital space, what we're doing, why we're doing what we're doing. I'm going to take off my jacket. I, I get a little passionate about this. So hold on a second. Um, all right, back in action. And, um, and so one of the things stumped me, actually, within a few months of my gig at Google, as I was investigating what I call the visual web, which is pics, you know, static or sight, sound, and motion moving images, I was, I was stumped. Because if you actually look at what we're watching and playing with and sharing every minute of the day, it looks something like this. And this, we turn up the volume. I mean, come on, right? Do you want your kids watching this kind of stuff? I, I don't. How am I going to get my kids into Yale, right, if they're watching this kind of stuff? Mind you, my oldest is only 12, but you know, you have to start. You have to start them young. Right. And if we're not watching goat videos, we're trading cat gifts, or we're spending endless hours looking at the pics of what my friend posted last night with regards to his meatball dinner that he had, right? We are spending a ton of time doing this. We took, last year, 380 billion pictures. And over the past few months, there were half a million different incarnations <laughs> of Harlem Shake posted. Seriously. And then get this, this is always freaking me out. On an average day, 24 hours, right, 24 hour period, we are watching 500 years worth of YouTube videos. We are spending a buttload of time uploading, downloading, creating, sharing, and playing in the visual web. Right? I mean, I get it. It's kind of funny, you know? Really? It's a big waste of time. It's silly, it's senseless, and it's self indulgent. Are we just getting dumber and dumber? Now, I have to say, I was, I couldn't take it, right? And I was struggling with this. Because after all, right, we're not all stupid. Certainly not you guys at Yale, right? How could we be doing so much of something if it means so little to us? So I started challenging my friends and my buddies. And then I started hanging out with anthropologists and psychologists and digital vanguards and creative geniuses, really investigating this issue. What is going on here? And what we found out is that all this digital visual play doesn't mean so little, but so much to us. Hugging bears, watching sexy firemen, and cute babies, all of that, all of that actually matters a ton. Listen to the cats. I can has meaning. And for all you marketing maestros in the audience, you know that if all this visual play means so much to us human beings, it's going to mean a whole hell of a lot to your brands. So let's dive in. Thanks to the web, I have easy access to the world's masterpieces. I don't even have to go to a museum anymore to see what Leonardo da Vinci did. And yet, why is it that my picture of my bowl of cereal that I posted this morning already got 37 likes, and my buddy who sits next to me is dying for me to watch a video on geese barnacles. <laughs> what gives? What gives, right? I mean, if you look, though, at our curations a little bit more closely, what you see is we're gathering, we're curating, we're sharing stuff, everyday stuff, everyday events, everyday places, everyday things, yet upon even closer inspection, what you see is all of those everyday events and things and places are 
shot, displayed, juxtaposed in a new way, offering us a new perspective, seen through a new lens, be it a beautifully shot fire hydrant, dog pee and all, a close-up of a frog, or a rather gross video of sheep giving birth. I know, I've seen it many times, right? Now, this hardly constitutes high art, though. Why do we care? Why are we looking at this stuff? Well, the answer is surprisingly deep. You see, since the beginning of time, we've all asked ourselves that this scary question that always seems to crop up when we're sitting in traffic or filling out those deadly forms, we call them trickses at Google, Patty knows, right? Or when I'm waiting for the train to take me to, to Yale this morning. And that question is, is this all there is? Is this my life? Is this what I'm going to spend another $8,000 to live for? Right? <laughs> and since the beginning of time, ancient religions, Greek playwrights, novelists have sought to answer this question by feeding our appetite for wonder and discovery in the everyday. As Proust says, the voyage of discovery is not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. I love that quote. You see, we seek the fascinating, the wondrous, the exciting in the everyday to show ourselves that our daily lives, what we wear, what we eat, where we live, aren't mundane, but are full of beauty and fascination and wonder. So fast forward to today, and we're curating all of these everyday things, especially because of their everydayness, made that much more interesting. The visual web helps us see our world anew, helps us see our world for the first time with new eyes, making the familiar, the forgotten familiar fascinating, <coughs> and reigniting our love affair with the world. In essence, all this, all this you know, seemingly mundane imagery and GIFs and videos, they actually elevate our everyday and make us feel like our world does matter. This cracks me up. Every time I see, I, you know, I have seen these videos time and time again, it still cracks me up. But I mean, come on, right? Somebody clearly has a lot of time on his hands. Because this isn't a case of someone who just, you know, added a goat video to a stream. No. This is a case where someone keenly realized that the end note of the screaming goats, which is a B flat, also happens to be the high note of Les Mis's Who Am I in One Day More? But then he didn't stop there. No. He then felt compelled to download the GOAT video, download the, the Let Me's videos, splice them, edit them, to, to edit them together, upload them, and share them with the world. And he's not alone. There are many different versions of this. What is going on? Guess what? We all share the same impulse. How many of you, and I know I've asked this question, have asked to yourselves, your spouses, your friends, what can I make? What can I contribute to this world? How do I leave my mark? What can I create that's going to have some value, some meaning to somebody before I die? Now, the visual web and the digital space in general gives us a huge arsenal of tools and applications to make stuff with, right? My highly filtered pick for this event, for example. I mean, does it even look like me? <laughs> Who cares, right? <laughs> but that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the visual web's ability to tap the child's mind. And it does this in two ways. First, there's ample evidence that children create synapses at an amazingly high rate, much faster than us mere adults, right? And it's those synapses that lead to creativity, that lead to ideas. 
And if any of you have children, you know you're always told, expose your children to novel experiences as much as possible. Because this mixing and matching of novel experiences lead to that many more ideas. The synapses just fire, right? What's more, children are so creative. This synaptic play is happening so much because they lack the rules of logic and order and linearity that we all attain, that all govern us as we age. How many of you, this has certainly happened to me, sit at the breakfast table and your child comes in and she's wearing polka dots on the top and stripes on the bottom. She's strutting in, you know, and you say, oh, you got to go change that outfit. And she says, what do you mean? I got a whole new look. No one's invented this. And you say, you broke the rules. It's this freedom from order and logic and linearity and this notion of, or of beginning, middle, and end and all those social boundaries that frees children to go and explore, weaving in and out of worlds and combining unlike notions and elements, coming up with ideas so freely. The visual web gives us a return to that state. It frees us to go adventuring through a whole array of imagery and clips, be them old or new, from a world away or our own backyard, and become a mixer and matcher of content, a bricolore, as the anthropologists call it without boundaries of time and space and tone and logic. Sites like YouTube and Pinterest, if you've been on them, you know, they offer up all these different categories simultaneously that you can weave in and out and start unearthing gems to play with. The more we play in the visual web, the more we are returning to this creative, fertile space where all this synaptic play <laughs> is on fire. And we're mixing, matching, and mimicking are in full form. That's why Les Mis and Goats work. That's why they, they can connect. And guess what? Watching counts. Even if you're just witnessing all these memes and gifs and clips, you're effectively celebrating and appreciating all the creativity that we can all unleash in this space. You're saying to the creator, I like the way you synapse. And that gets you going, right? All this synaptic play with your, your participating in it or watching it from afar makes you feel like, hey, maybe I can start being creative too. Anybody see Jenna Marbles? Anyone, anyone know Jenna Marbles? Okay, she is awesome, right? But the reason she's awesome is that she's this hot chick, and yet she has the pottiest mouth you've ever heard, right? It's like college humor meets this gorgeous, and it's just like, whoa, that's, the synapses are just firing, because you're like, how do those two things go together? And yet they work, right? Joe Sabia, who is um, a, uh, the founder of CDZA, which is this uh, musical website that mixes and mashes music, he says that when such content is shared, you feel the passion of the creator, and that in turn inspires you, right? That in turn lights your own fire and makes you realize, hmm, maybe now I can make my mark. Maybe I have the means to be creative. Maybe now I can make my ideas matter. Now, clearly, because I forced you guys to watch these screaming goats, you can see that I'm, I've grown quite fond of them. But I wasn't content just to watch them over and over and over again, right? I had to share them. And in this case, I shared them with my kids. those screamy goats was not watching them again, but seeing the looks on my kids' faces and hearing them crack up. We all do that, right? So why do we want to share these funny videos, these funny pics? Is it that we want to show off? Hey, I saw this first. Look at me. I'm so cool. Part of social media. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. But what's even better 
is that we want to share these because first, we want to show our friends and our family that we're full of life, effervescence, happiness. We have a sense yeah. of humor, even if we don't always. And moreover, we want to share these funny pics and videos and clips because we want others to share in the experience with us. Now, are, are we just being altruistic? No. We're hardwired to want to do this. Take a look at this. See, from our very earliest days, from the first few months of life, we learn that by offering others a gift of happiness, in this case it's the smile because that's our first emotional reaction, we get that much more happiness in return. When babies smile at their mothers, what happens? The mothers smile back and the babies feel this sense of joy because they feel that this sense of bonding. In fact, there's a lot of evidence that shows that when babies start smiling like this, offering the social smile as it calls, the mother-baby bond escalates. And this extends to their larger social network as well. We soon realize that by offering happiness to others, it amplifies our own because we feel that much more connected to our friends and our family. So why did I want to show that crazy video to my kids, right? Because I knew, I knew that that little bit of laughter and cracking up was going to bond me to them that much more. So when we share a video or a clip like this, is it to crack us up and make us feel good? Yeah, but moreover, we want to share it because we get that rush of pleasure in knowing that others are experiencing that pleasure with us. We know, therefore, that our friends and our family are that much more bonded to us. When we share a clip, when we share a video, when we share a picture like this, we're not just sharing it, we are sharing in it. We are not just a consumer of that happiness and a consumer of that pleasure, we are now a provider of it too, constantly fueling that connection we have with others. We call this the energy exchange. And it's this energy exchange, this exchange of pictures, this exchange of videos, this exchange of happiness and laughter that constantly remind us that we're bonded with others and that to you, and to you, and to you, I matter. So, is the visual web just a dumping ground for our ridiculous pics and our self-indulgent videos? Is it a sign of our intellectual void in this culture? No way. Where else can we commune and engage and create with such emotional power and energy? Where else can we see our world anew every single day? Where else can we get those synapses firing and start, start in getting ourselves into this whole creative craziness and feeling like we too can be creative? And where else can we feel our bond strengthening with every ridiculous video that we send to someone? Nowhere. So should we be playing more, not less in the visual web? Absolutely. Even my kids should be doing that. Now, I'm told I have zero minutes, but I do have a few thought stutters. So I don't know, am I allowed to present the thought stutters? Uh, awesome, awesome, because you know, who cares about all this theory, right? I've got my clients in the back going, yeah, now what are you gonna do for me, right? I gotta take these insights, and I actually gotta do something with them. And this is new research. I actually, I feel terrible for Heather because I said, I got a new study, I got a show. And she had to change the whole gender around. This is new, this is hot off the shelf, and therefore, I'm still figuring out these thought starters, but I'd love to get your opinion as I, as I share them. So what do we do with all these insights? All right, first, find the forgotten familiar in your brand, in your product, in your product experience, or even in your consumers' lives, followers' lives, right? And help people rediscover the beauty of it. Great example of this was Mont Blanc, right? They asked people to just capture a second, a eh, regular second of their every day. And then what happens when all those seconds are compiled? You go, whoa, this is beautiful, right? Or even I love blend tech, what they did, right? Will it blend? Anybody remember Will it blend, right? I mean, it's just a, it's a blender. Eh, household appliance. And yet, 
they started putting all this crazy shit in there, right? They started putting marbles and iPhones, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, that blade that I just took for granted is so awesome. Two, fuel that synaptic play. If you search your brand, what you'll find out, or search for your brand, rather, 25% of what comes up is user-generated content. And I bet you, like this Oreo meets Domino's picture I have up there, that it's a mixing and matching. You will see a lot of that. So build upon that. Increase that. Fuel that. Right? There's something beautiful going on there. And moreover, do that with your own brand. Right? Try to connect your brand to something seemingly unrelated and see what happens. Right? Here's a great example. Uh, a UK telecom company, three, I don't know if you've heard of them, but they created the pony mixer. Our Wyden Kennedy friends are back there. They created that. Uh, the pony mixer. And what you do is you take a pony, first of all, ponies, telecom. Okay. Then dancing ponies. And then what you can do is you overlay the dancing pony with special effects that you can choose from in any kind of music. So just for a second, I'm going to share with you what I created. Bollywood meets funk. Let's see what happens. I mean, it gets crazy. But I love it. All right. <laughs> Anybody can do it. Go do it on your break, right? OK. You like the way I synapse? OK. Uh, all right. I know this is hard, because I worked with many a marketer over the years of my life. When you're in this space, don't be so deliberate. Don't be so rational and logical. See yourself as a way to offer happiness to others. Be a gift of happiness, because if you make them happy, if you make them laugh, I mean, generally happy, not a ha-ha, look at that stupid joke, the guy slipped on the banana pill. I mean, really, you should measure for happiness, not for did you get how many you know, different ingredients are in my product. Because they, then they will pass it along because they want others to be happy with them. And guess what? They will attribute that passion back to you. Be a source of energy. There's no coincidence, you know, about this, this little spot. Right, okay, everyone knows this, right? Because you probably got it sent to you, yeah? Pepsi Max, Jeff Gordon Presents. Hilarious! It's gotten over 35 million views already. I think it's been out like a month or so, right? Because this was so freaking funny. That's why people are, are loving it so much. And they remember that Pepsi Max is there. They're not thinking about how many calories or how, many, you know, how much caffeine is in there, but they get the point. Right? I urge you on your break, watch this video and watch it sitting next to someone and I bet you, you will feel the love and you will feel the connection grow that much more because you're sitting next to someone cracking up with them. So, in essence, right, the visual web isn't just where we are, it's who we are. And by connecting more strongly with all the meaning that's embedded here. And there is a lot. I truly believe you will connect that much more strongly with your consumers, your fans, your followers, your friends, and your family, and ultimately, yourselves. Mucho gracias.